All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at a problem in this 98 Chevrolet Cheyenne's radio, where when you go to put a CD in, the CD goes in just fine, and then after it sits for a second, it's going to say error. You get the error, and then it doesn't play. All right, so, so now to get the radio out so we can do this repair, we're going to turn the key so that we can um, lower the gear shift and the steering wheel out of the way. We're going to take a trim tool and we're going to prise back this outer part of the trim. Just get that all off the clips and you just be very careful so you don't break anything. And then what I'm going to try and do is not remove it all the way, just kind of tilt it up and out of the way so that we can get the radio. And to get the radio out, the hazard guy accidentally got tripped there. All right, you squeeze these two tabs and pull forward. goes. This hasn't been off in a long time. We got an antenna connection on this side and then we got the electronics harness on this side. All right we're gonna take this guy in the bench, open it up, and I'm gonna show you how to fix the CD. All right so you know with the radio in this position where the CD is in the top, we want to take this top cover off. You know, to a certain extent you might be able to get it off with your fingers. So this is one I'll try first. And then you can maybe use a small flathead screwdriver to get the rest of the way. All right, so this is the CD drive mechanism. And what we're going to be interested in doing with this problem is we're going to be trying to see if we've got uh, gummed up dirt or crud on the laser. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this guy. So there's two screws here. I'm going to get a socket for that. And that might be that might be all we need. So let me try taking a socket to that and see if that's all we can get it out. All right, this uh, these these guys turn out to be three sixteenths English, but um, taking a look at it, I can see there's actually some fasteners down here in the front as well. So we're gonna have to take the faceplate to get everything out so we can remove this and give it a thorough cleaning, which is what I think is what's causing the error. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the faceplate. Start with taking off the volume knob and the power knob so that we can remove the nut that secures this guy. Just use a crescent wrench is fine. There's a little washer here too. that we need to get off. All right. And then with that guy out of the way, we're gonna need to work the front plate off. I like to take like some picks, you know, you can use a guitar pick. These are little picks that you use when you work on a phone. You take it apart and just try to get these worked under these retaining clips, like so. Do the same thing on the ones on the bottom here as well. All right. Just makes it a little easier to get everything to, to let go. Now we can slip the screwdriver under these two corners, get those guys off. And we can slip under these two corners. And get this guy off. Okay. Wish I had more of these picks because it ends up trying to slip its way back on as you go. But eventually, get it released off the top here, and then we can get it off the bottom. I 
think on the bottom here may be retained on by this guy. It's been a while since I took one of these radios apart to fix burned out bulbs, but yeah, that's it. All right, there we go. And then uh, this knob here might be. No, nope, I don't think we need that. I don't think we need that guy off to get this. But yeah, they'll they'll end up snaking back on and reattaching on you, which is a real pain in the ass. Eventually, though, you'll coax it off. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. We can take this 3 16 and we can reduce, remove these two bolts in the front. Take the two in the back. Turn it around, take the two in the back out. Alright, with these four out, we should be able to remove this guy. And then we've just got a wiring harness holding him in. Just uh, unplugs. Okay. All right, so this is our CD assembly. You know, if we were a radio shop back in the 90s or even the early 2000s, we'd end up just swapping this whole thing out with the replacement. And there's the part number you'd go try to dig up if you, if you could find such a thing. But that's not in the cards here in 2020. So what we're going to try and do is two things. We're going to, we're going to try and uh, blow some compressed air in here in case we've got dust and debris that might be on the laser. That's what I was looking for. So there's a view of the laser right there. And then we're going to clean him off with some isopropyl alcohol. We'll also give a shot on these gears. And we'll take some of this alcohol, we'll take a Q-tip. And we'll go in here and we'll try to give this guy a clean. Just rubbing back and forth. Yeah. Even though you don't get any debris off of it, doesn't mean it's not dirty. All right, so we've cleaned that. And then all of these gears here, just looking to see if any of them are broken or damaged. Sometimes you can get that sort of problem where the teeth are broken. 
but I don't see any evidence of that on this. The other thing we're looking for is you can see if you zoom in here on the edge of this gear there's a uh, kind of like a half moon shape to it and we just want to make sure that it's not stripped and this one looks fine doesn't like it's stripped it looks like it's sitting in the nylon just fine so the other thing you can try and do while you have the thing out is just try to examine on the inside there's another one of these gears that sits on a a worm gear and then there's a standard gear on top of it and again you're just trying to take a look and make sure the teeth damaged anything busted because if you find something like that the unit's trash you're gonna have to go pull one from a salvage yard and replace it but if you can find that all of this stuff looks good then this error that we were seeing is typically just because it's not tracking properly because it's either got dirt or it's binding and so that's the, 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 the thing with the gears is to make sure that we're traversing okay with that so again I'm just continuing this inspection looking around for any signs of um, dust or debris or dirt that might be wrapped around inside here that could be causing us to have a problem with access and I don't see anything else right I'm looking down here in the the, the actuator electronics you know it, it, it sucks in and ejects the CD okay so I think there's nothing wrong with that piece but we're checking it all the same just to be sure the last thing I'm going to do before I put it back together is I'm going to put a little bit of silicone lubricant on these gears both the one down in here and the ones over here and then I'm also going to locate the the one that actuates the laser that's what I'm not trying to hunt around for right now because I want to put a little bit of lubricant on that so let me go ahead and get my silicone lubricant out and I'll apply that and I'll show you that piece and we'll put it back together all right guys so um, got my silicone uh, lubricant this is what I use on electrical things it's usually pretty safe on most kinds of plastics to use this type of lubricant rather than something that's petroleum based so what I'm going to start with I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take the other end of this q-tip and I'm just going to saturate it with this stuff and then I'm going to start with these gears on the motor here that work the uh, laser itself you don't need a lot I'm just gonna try to get a little bit on here so that when this guy goes he has a lot easier job of it and then the next one I'm going to do is this worm gear that moves the laser So what I'm hoping to do by this is to eliminate any tracking problems that are caused by a delay in the actuation of the positioning of this motor with the electronics, right? So the circuitry on here hooks up to a small microcontroller who's expecting this guy to, to move at a certain pace at a certain position. And if it doesn't, you know, he might detect that as a problem. And then we're going to put a little bit on these gears. A little bit goes a long way because uh, the sky didn't normally have any lubrication at all, right? So we don't want to put a lot on. And the last thing we're going to do is that warm gear that was in there. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of get it on the warm gear part. Right, so I'm just uh, trying to see if I can get you some light in there where you can see it. Right, so it's going to be putting on either side of the worm gear so that we get the silicone. All right, at this point, I'm going to reassemble it and put it back into the vehicle. And I'm hoping that this kind of little uh, preventative maintenance, if you will, piece of tape that was on here kind of came off. We'll uh, correct the problem that we were seeing. Okay. 
Now as you go in, um, make sure you got the front and the back. This tab here goes in this little tab hole there. And then on the front, there's a tab that helps you line up these two bolt holes. Okay, we'll put the back ones in first. I'm not necessarily going to film putting these bolts back together and everything, so let me go get this guy put back together and we'll walk it back out to the truck and whoops, we'll see if that uh, fixes our problem. All right, guys, we've got the radio put back into the vehicle. I'm going to turn the uh, to the run position. Pop the CD in there. And this time, great. So we're able to cruise around any of these tracks that we want now. No problem whatsoever. All right, there's the fix. So if you get this air condition on these old radios, it's a combination of dust and debris on the laser as well as dust and debris on some of the gears. You do the procedure I showed you and you should be good to go. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. If you got some questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.